often get frozen at home. Right. Hello, everyone. Um, I think I can barely see the attendance list now. Right, my name's Fatima Ahmed and I uh, work for London Borough of Hounslow. Um, I'm responsible for road safety education and that also includes um, cycle training and, and promotion. I've been working for many, many years in the road safety team, um, but the cycle training came directly um, under my responsibility in 2016. And and in order to understand more about bikeability levels um, and how this was being delivered um, in, in Hounslow Borough, um, I started attending um, the adult sessions as a learner on a, on a weekend. Um, I had learned to ride a bike as a child, um, but that was on a, an adult bike that my brother and I had found abandoned. But that was growing up in Yorkshire and these things did happen. Um, I was not a confident cyclist. Um, I wasn't able to look back or, or take my hand off the handlebar. But our lovely instructors, and I mean, our instructors are, are just amazing um, of how they've helped me and lots of other people get back on, on the bike. Um, and I was riding, I'm now riding beautifully, I shall say. Uh, and by attending the sessions actually really helped me with um, looking at what changes we needed to make to make to to get more people signed up to to cycle training and making it more accessible um, let me move to this next slide so it's not moving okay cool yeah so the sessions that were delivered in 2016 uh, we had every Saturday um, two sessions delivered from um, a cycle shed at our old council building. Um, the bikes were provided at additional cost. We only had five bikes in total and bookings was um, done via email uh, and we didn't offer any one-to-one -one at the time. And our numbers for, for that was around two to three participants. Um, and that was on a good day and sometimes um, no shows as well. And that did happen um, quite a lot. Um, one of the things that, one of the changes, uh, well, lots of changes that we made um, in, in that, and this is all um, pre-COVID, um, oh God, this is not, yeah, that's it. So pre-COVID our program, and this is what it looked like. We started running, seven sessions um, from two different locations, um, Lampton Park and uh, from the um, Osley Park, which is a, a national trust. Uh, we changed um, how we booked. It was a, a group session where people didn't need to book, um, you know, taking away those barriers. There was no cost to, to participants. Uh, and we also provided um, bikes at, at the sessions and we had a, a huge stock um, of bikes that we brought in. Um, I think that that was the biggest barrier um, for people accessing was the, the bookings and the cost. Um, we found that the beginners sessions, 100% um, of people um, used the bikes that were provided um, as bike ownership, um, particularly at the beginner session was, was quite low. And our current offer we now, to date, have um, four cycling hubs um, in the in the borough, uh, which I will talk more about in my in further in my presentation. And one of these is an inclusive um, cycling hub. Uh, we run an extensive uh, bike uh, bike week program um, this year um, and the two years, obviously, before COVID. Um, the the bike for you um, sessions, um, helping people um, buying a bike. Um, we run doctor bikes and bike register every week um, at various locations in, in the borough, um, which helps promote all the activities that we're, we're doing in, in around cycling. Um, we're also um, participating with women only cycling groups, um, which has become um, extremely popular. Um, our relationship with our comms team has progressed immensely. Um, very supportive of the campaigns um, that we run um, and promote these on all the, the hounds of social media platforms. Um, we're also running Try Before You Bike Scheme, which I will talk about later. 
and obviously Hansa Cycling Campaign, who've really helped us with promoting again um, the work that that we do, and in in return, you know, we send a lot of people to the to the lead rides um, and and the agenda that they follow. Right. So this is our first cycling hub, Lambton Park. Um, so with the success that we had, uh, with the numbers that we achieved in 2017 and 18 uh, of people attending our sessions, we needed a, a new home um, for our hubs, um, for our bikes. Um, as the council was also moving um, to a new office building, which wasn't then not suitable for um, for us to to house um, a, a parking, a, a cycle um, parking. Um, hub from there. So logistically um, it just didn't work. So in agreement with the parks team um, who allowed us to have two new shipping containers um, sitting along one that was already there which they kept their tools in. Um, this was my first ever experience with um, shipping containers, the sleepless nights and how I was going to get two big shipping containers into the park um, kept me up most nights. <laughs> Uh, we got a local artist to paint all three containers uh, with a cycling mural on all four sides. Um, became a bit of a, a tourist attraction and saw lots of young, young people taking selfies um, uh, with the containers behind them. The, they sit right by Piccadilly Line. So if you're ever on, a, on the Piccadilly Line, on going either in or out of Heathrow uh, between Hounslow West and Hounslow Central, um, they're kind of a, a landmark now. Um, they've worked extremely well. It's given um, cycling a huge presence in the park. Uh, we both um, run um, cycle training and doctor bikes uh, from this event um, and other lead rides that we've done. We've started um, from here as well as um, our Hounslow Biking Bells, um, who is for women who've achieved level three and still wanted to continue um, cycling with us. Um, again, this was um, pre-COVID. We were running these every week. Uh, we will look to bring these back after, well, once um, COVID restrictions um, allow us. So one of the other hubs that we've got is uh, working in partnership with the National Trust. Um, who had uh, their own funding uh, via the British Cycling um, to make their grounds more cycle friendly and also to operate a bike hire scheme. Um, they've got a great selection of bikes for both children and adults. Um, the trust allows us to use these for sessions at no cost to us or all the participants. Um, and it helps them as people come back and use their, uh, their bike hire uh, with their families. And the third hub that we've now got, again, this was um, fully funded um, by um, the Healthy Streets Officer Program. Um, and this is in a part of the borough where there's an area of concern with, you know, high deprivation, um, low cycling numbers. Again, um, two shipping containers in a, in a car park of a leisure centre. Uh, where the car parks are already been cordoned off um, for a motorcycling school, um, who've kindly allowed us um, to use this space um, for training in the afternoons. They use it for, for CBT in the mornings. Um, and we're hopefully um, after, you know, may maybe later this year, trying to bring back a lot of the initiatives that we're running at Lampton to bring to, to Hanworth. Uh, we did plan a huge launch um, for April um, 2020. Um, they literally, the containers uh, went in a week before we went into the first um, lockdown. Um, wasn't exciting at all. Um, but we will be um, relaunching um, Hanworth. Um, but in the meantime, we have been running uh, both one-to-one uh, -one adult cycle training and family cycle training. Um, but we need to do a lot more. Um, and it, as it's a, a new hub, um, just waiting for all the restrictions to be lifted. But the, the potential here is great. We've got 
um, access to Hanworth Park, which is just on, on one side, <clears throat> and then the, the hard surface that we use, which is cordoned off for, for the adult cycle training and, uh, and learn to ride that we're looking to use for. Um, and we've got toilet facilities um, by, with the leisure centre being, being just there. Um, so the, the other cycling hub now that we have is at Inwood Park. So in 2019, I received an email uh, with this drawing uh, from a colleague who was looking to resurface um, the area for a cycle track for the parks team. Um, this was um, obviously music to my ears. I hadn't, you know, hadn't even known that Inwood Park exists, existed um, or even stepped into, into it. Um, the same week I organized a meeting with our parks team to view the site um, and I mean it was a brilliant space um, for, fa for family space which featured around uh, a water play area. The parks team had um, secured um, some large amounts of funding to make this area um, nice. Um, again, uh, you know, lots of antisocial behaviour problems here. So there was a huge drive to bring this area into, into kind of new usage. The plan for the track was just for the resurfacing work. Uh, the park team suggested that we wait until the works had been done before we introduce any cycling activities. Um, lucky for us, uh, we didn't wait. Um, otherwise, we would still be waiting as no work has happened uh, to date. Uh, we ran some pilot sessions with um, two of our special schools uh, where we transported uh, both um, bikes um, for the day and also we had uh, minibuses arriving on site uh, with, with pupils from school. Uh, we then, after the pilot sessions, we put um, a plan together uh, for, to use the site in the, in the current state. Um, because this would reduce um, the cost of bringing in um, bikes uh, on every time that we, we run the sessions. So this is, this is what it looks like now. And in terms of facilities, this is gold level. Um, it's secure, it's fenced off um, all around the perimeter of the, the cycle track. It's got Toilets, separate toilets here. We've got a small kitchen, which only we have access to. And we've now installed uh, a shipping container, uh, another shipping container. That's our fifth shipping container on, on soft ground. Um, and I initially thought that that couldn't be done. But after taking advice from BikeWorks, who are our current cycle training provider, we put in um, some uh, railway sleepers. Um, got our hands on highways to do that for us um, and then we were able to place the shipping container on the railway sleepers uh, which allowed us um, which allowed you know allowed us to get permission from the parks team to to have that um, so we started um, the, the the biggest cost sorry um, I just forgot to mention was um, the bikes itself, the adapted bikes, uh, obviously are hugely expensive. Uh, we had about 15,000 to spend on, on just on bikes. The shipping container was around 4,000, uh, which was again um, paid for by um, the Healthy Streets funding. Um, and then the cost for works for um, another 3,000, um, which I got another colleague to pay for out of his funding pot. Um, so here we are. Uh, we opened in August 2020, yes, in the pandemic. Um, and really successful. Um, we've been running um, now every Saturday and it is, it's, you know, on an average, we're getting 15 to 20 participants every Saturday. And that is where we're limiting it uh, with numbers just to ensure that we're COVID safe. Um, so the site is only just operating for people with disabilities and age-related mobility. Uh, we are thinking of um, bringing in Learn to Ride um, after school sessions here and holiday courses um, in, in the summer. So it's, again, we're extremely lucky that, that we've got 
this use of space um, and and it's a safe um, space and it's a well maintained um, park um, in the in the in the borough. So Bike Week, um, we've been running um, since 2018 in, in the borough. Uh, and I say that every week is Bike Week in, in Hounslow because the, the most of the activities here, I would say 90%, um, we run every, every week. Uh, I mean, they're happening um, literally in the rides that we promote that Hounslow Cycling Campaign run, um, yes, all, all of it here so and it, it does the bike week program does highlight to our residents of all the things that that we're doing so it's it's a brilliant opportunity to 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 use that and our comms team um again brilliant at promoting all the activities that we do for that week um, some of the other things that that we've been doing um bike for you is a session that we run uh, back in 2018 we are looking to bring them back in um, because when you deliver training and lead ride groups the most frequent question that you always get is what bike should I buy and it does put people off not knowing what is the right choice for them it's a big spend I mean it took me six months um, to choose and I you know to for even for my second bike, my I had a I had bought an old uh, bike for my first one, a second hand one. But when I went out to buy a new one, it literally, I mean, it was just a, a yeah a, forever to choose what was right for me. So I can imagine for somebody who's a complete beginner, what that feels like and the type of things that obviously we covered um, in these sessions are the, the t most aspects of choosing a bike, even the simple understanding of. Um, the different types of bike, hybrid, road bike, mountain bike, um, the riding position, gears, brakes, um, security as well is a big thing. You know, we've seen enough people buy new bikes and then not have a, a good lock and heard stories about, I've only had it for a month and it's, it's stolen. Um, so this was extremely well received. We're looking to bring some more in um, when we're COVID safe um, environment. Uh, this is something I'm really excited about. We launched in the last week of March, um, Try Before You Bike Scheme. Uh, so uh, this is running in 20 other London boroughs. I think Alper is on, online. He might be able to share if that's gone up. It's a scheme. It's a great scheme, which allows you to try a bike before you commit to the, to the large spend and then allows you to spread the cost over 12 months if you then wish to keep the bike um, at the end of the month. Um, again, at the moment with COVID, uh, I mean, you're literally waiting for over a year and a half before you can buy a bike of your choosing. But through Try Before You Bike, um, you know, the bikes are available. Um, and to date, we have had 64 signups, which I'm told is extremely good by Alpa. Um, we've now got cargo bikes um, to offer to both parents and, and businesses. So it's a free month's trial. And the, the added feature that Hounslow has um, for this scheme is a hundred pound discount for unemployed um, low income households. And I think that does help um, with targeting uh, specific groups and, and areas where you do want to get cycling numbers up. Um, and the next one, again, uh, we've launched Cycle Sisters in Hounslow in May, in, yeah, just, yeah, last month. And um, we've already had um, over 40 participants that have come um, through this scheme. Uh, it's a Muslim women's um, cycling group um, now running in eight London boroughs. Um, so we're quite lucky in the west side of the borough that, to have them. Um, there is an opportunity for more boroughs to sign up to this. Um, if you're in, in London borough, um, you can contact Cycle Sisters um, in setting one up in, in your area. Um, again, you know, it's proved useful because a lot of people who thought, oh, I'd like to do that, can't ride, will then are directed to Hounslow Council's um, learn, you know, um, cycling program um, for them to learn to ride a bike before they can join the Cycle Sisters um, in, in Osterley Park. 
Um, so again, hands on cycling campaign um, have been quite important in, in our kind of, you know, in where, how we've grown uh, as a borough, um, helped us with the cycle training program and the, and the promotion of it um, and, and us sending people to their rides. So here comes the, the number um, crunching. Um, again, this is from the TFL cycle skills portal that was, that was used back in um, 2016. Um, you can see the, the participation level was, um, was low. Um, yeah, 99 people in the whole of that year in 2016, not huge. Um, we didn't even rank, <laughs> um, which is quite embarrassing. Um, in, in that year in, the, in, the, in terms of the ranking position for, for boroughs. Um, but however, we did change that in the following year. So yeah, borough ranking number one, I'm pleased to say. So, um, and we did train over a thousand adults on, on, on the sessions here. Um, and that again, you know, by doing all the work that we did in the first two years, by um, in Lampton Park uh, and Osterley um, for both those sessions. And again, in, in the third year, our numbers yet increased. Um, and again, I have to say that the participation is predominantly women and uh, women from ethnic minority communities, I have to say. So we, we have hit the kind of the targets, you know, where we're promoting cycling in, in groups that are underrepresented in cycling um, in, in Hounslow, well, in, in London as well, I assume. Um, so yeah, that's um, Hounslow's story. So we're quite pleased. There's still lots more work to do for, for our borough. Um, but again, I think with all the things that we've, you know, despite COVID, I think the fact that we've set up two cycling hubs um, it, it is brilliant. And we're looking to, you know, no, no, no more cycling camps, I don't think, but definitely a lot more um, cycling promotion uh, within the borough. And, and our key area is to work in, in Hanworth this year. I think that's it for me. And that's my contact details if anybody wants them. Come out of Excellent. Thank you very much, um, Fatima. Uh, as I said before, we'll just, uh, there's the opportunity now for uh, a short sort of question and answer style session. Uh, just as a reminder, there's two ways that you can submit a question. There's the chat function at the bottom, which has just had its first question, uh, or you can use the raise hand function uh, and I will give you permission to speak. Uh, but first I'll read the question from Simon Taylor, who says, have you carried out any before and after analysis to see what beneficial effects uh, what sorry what the uh, beneficial effects have been on road safety and the number severity of injuries no we've 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 not done that i mean obviously the data that we've i showed in my last um three screens um was around the numbers that we um achieved in in getting people to sign up to us but no not on the on the severity no but we are we have put in um a data collision review just now um so hopefully in the next couple of weeks that we'll be looking at, at getting that so the data collision will be coming through then there's just a quick uh, quick comment from Faye Goodman he says uh, apologies Fatima just missed your contact details could you kindly put them in the chat yeah, um, that's fine. I'll do that at the end. Is there any other questions? Any more questions at the moment? Uh, if not, I'll dive in with one. Um, it's a bit more of a generic question, but obviously you talk a lot about, um, you know, COVID has seen some of the different initiatives you run paused and others limited on numbers. Uh, given that, obviously, you know, generally speaking, COVID has seen an increase in cycling. Is there any sort of hope or expectation that once restrictions are lifted, the numbers might go up even further? Yes, definitely, especially with um, Hanworth um, and, um, and, and inward, we're looking at setting up more initiatives there. Yeah. So we've got and we're seeing, um, day, you know, we're seeing, sorry. Um, so because of COVID, we had to change the way that, that we delivered, um, you know, the one-to-one -one training. We, see, we are seeing a lot more people signing up to, up to that. So that is something that we will, you know, keep. 
um, from this and, and promote that as a, as a first and then people come and attend the, the group sessions after that. So yeah, we are, there is some learning from, from COVID. And um, we've got a question from uh, Liz Knight who can, I'll ask you to unmute yourself. Here we go. Okay. Well, I'm not sure we can hear you, Liz. Oh, I have unmuted myself. Um, we we can hear you. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, good. Yeah, I think I put my hand in the way. Um, hi, Fatima. Thank you very hi. much for that. That was really interesting, really inspirational, I think. The variety and the fun. And I just love the containers. So thank you for telling us about it all. I just wanted to ask, do you have any idea of how much your the training that you've done, with, which is often in groups and things like that, actually translates into people perhaps cycling to work most days or um, you know, a more regular cycling in their, in their private lives, if you see what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, we do like with the in the first few years of 2016-17, the TFL did do a um, a questionnaire with attendees, and and again, a lot of people who've from what we see is bike ownerships so who've come to our sessions not own a bike and then go out, you know, after doing several sessions owning a bike and then saying that they've traveled to here and and doing the commuting um so we've seen definitely a lot a lot of that yes oh, that's really good to hear isn't it you must be really yeah. encouraged by that because it's a kind of end result isn't it yes yeah no, definitely yeah so all the you know again story people coming to for level threes um you know saying i want to learn to to ride you know to go to work uh, want to be a bit more safer secure you know feel it confident in order to do that so we do yeah have those stories back mm, thank you on them yeah um, and there was a question how easy was it to get parks to agree um the first time um it wasn't easy at all um it you know i mean even to to cycle in the park you know um the, the Lambton Park, we use the, the tennis courts to do the, the complete beginners training. And when I first asked them, they said, no, you must be joking. Um, but again, we went back, we persevered. Um, but once when we moved, when our parks team saw that the use of the park was beginning to get grow, um, they did eventually agree on that. It's the first hurdle really. So because we'd managed to get Lambton Park in, two containers that were sitting on a hard surface where there was already one shipping container there, um, which would, then did make it slightly easier. Um, so that set a, a precedent really um, for us to, for other containers, but it, yeah. And, you know, having somebody in the parks team that's also pro cycling does help. Yeah, we've got another question which asks, um, how do you promote the cycling initiatives you offer to residents? So we use a lot of social media platforms um, and then uh, word of mouth, um, uh, PDF flyers, you know, we will promote everywhere. Uh, there's a page cycle with Hounslow, um, again, uh, you know, through that. Um, and I think the doctor bikes do actually help quite a lot because a lot of people will come to get their bikes registered um, for, free, you know, bike register for free or to get their bikes checked. And then that's a great opportunity to sell all the activities that you're doing and the lead rides that you're running. Um, yeah, but, you know, our comms team um, always have, you know, are running um, any cycling activities that we do and they will promote it. Excellent. Do we have any more questions or are we just about? So um, again, help to reach women and ethnic minorities. Yeah, definitely word of mouth. Um, we've done faith groups where we've done promotions around that. Um, but I think social media is, it, it's, is, is quite good for even reaching women and, and ethnic minority communities. So that has definitely helped. Just a little follow up on the social media element of it. Do you use any sort of paid advertising? Because that obviously enables you to specifically reach demographics no haven't got a funding for paid advertising <laughs> but um yeah no, uh, no we've not done that yet just to change we've got another question uh, how do you get on for insurance so the for the containers i assume um yes that's covered by our um insurance uh, with our hands of council's insurance for that so again the cover is 
So if there's a, it's millions of pounds insurance, but the, the excess is so low, um, it just makes, sorry, excess is so high that if there's, if the bikes did get stolen or anything, we would just have to recruit it that from our own budgets again. 